Now let's cover calling all in bets or raises. Later on in a tournament, you'll start to see more and more players getting short stacked, which means you'll be faced with a lot more all in raises and all in bets. When that happens to you, you should run through the following thought process when deciding if you should call the bet. First, what range of hands does my opponent have? When deciding that, you should factor in all of the variables, including your opponent's level of desperation. For example, if a player goes all in under the gun for 8,000 and the blinds are 1,500, 3,000 with an ante, you should drastically broaden his range of hands to include virtually any hand with an ace in it. If you had chips and a hand like pocket sevens, it would probably make sense to call a desperate bet like that one. Or, in other situations against tighter players, you can drastically narrow down your opponent's range of hands based on his tendencies and the action in front of him. If a tight player goes all in, even after several other players have entered the pot, that would increase the likelihood that you were looking at a very strong hand. Second, ask yourself, what price am I being laid? This should and will become common practice for you when you start to play in no-limit tournaments on a more regular basis. When faced with a bet, the first thing you should do is count what's already in the pot in comparison to the bet you are currently facing. Let's look at an example. With blinds at 2,000, 4,000 with a 500 ante and nine players at the table, you've come in for a raise to 10,000. The player on the button goes all in for a total of 34,000 and the action is on you. Counting your 10,000, the all-in player's 34,000, and the blinds and annies, there is already 54500 in the pot. The bet to you is 24000 more, so the price you are being laid is 24000 to win 54500 2.27 to 1 odds if you calculate it. Now, you don't need to bring a calculator with you to figure this out. It's not as hard as it might seem. Here's how I like to figure it out. The bet, 24000 goes into 54500 at least twice, so I know I'm getting at least 2 to 1 odds. What's left over is about 6,000, which is a quarter of 24,000. That gets me to about 2.25 to 1, which is close enough. You don't need to worry about being accurate right down to the decimal point. Third, ask yourself this. How does my hand do against the range of hands I suspect my opponent has? This can be a little more tricky and isn't quite an exact science, but you should definitely take your time if you need to work it out. Let's look at an example of how I might talk my way through such a decision. Okay, I have ace-9, which I know for sure is the worst hand right now. I'm totally dead if my opponent has aces, but I'm a little worse than a 2-to-1 underdog against any other hand. In fact, if he only has a pair of 7s or 8s, I'm in a coin flip situation. Man, even if my opponent has ace-king, I'm not in terrible shape, only getting slightly the worst of it. I call. <laughs> Oftentimes, when you are calling an all-in bet, or any bet for that matter, you aren't calling simply because you think you have the best hand, but rather that the odds the pot is laying you dictates that it would be a good investment. An extreme example would be something like this. Let's say I told you to pick a number between 1, 2, or 3. Only one of those numbers wins for you, while if you guess wrong, I win. Your win rate would be approximately 33%. Now, if we each put up $100, that would be a silly bet for you to make. What if I told you, though, that I'd put up 400 to your 100? Now, despite the fact that you're an underdog to actually win the bet, the bet has great value for you. All you would have to do is be correct one out of four times to break even, but your win rate would dictate that you do much better than that. Compare that to a poker hand. Let's say I have ace nine of hearts and you have pocket kings. There's $200 in the pot and you go all in for your last 100. In this case, you could literally show me that you have me beat, but I would be a fool not to take that bet. I'd be risking $100 to win $300. I'd be getting 3 to 1 odds, but my hand is only about a 2 to 1 underdog against yours.